This is part 1 of link tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss what's link, benefits of using link, link architecture and different link providers that are available. So what's link? Link stands for language integrated query. Link enables us to query any type of data store, be it SQL Server, XML documents, objects in memory like list of customer, list of order, arrays, etc. be it entities or be it data sets. Why should we use link? What are the benefits of using link? To understand this, let's say we are developing a .NET application and this .NET application requires to fetch data from different data sources like databases, XML documents and from in-memory objects like list of customer, list of order, arrays, etc. Now for a developer who is working on this application, for him to be able to fetch data from these different data sources, he has to understand the technologies and the syntax that is specific to the underlying data source. For example, to be able to retrieve data from a SQL Server database, he needs to understand ADO.NET and Transact SQL that is specific to SQL Server database. Similarly, to be able to retrieve data from an XML document, the developer has to understand XPath and XSLT. And to be able to fetch data from in-memory objects, the developer has to know how arrays and generics work. Link enables us to work with these different data sources using a similar programming style without having the need to know the syntax and the technologies that are specific to the underlying data source. And another benefit of using Link is that it provides IntelliSense and compile time error checking as well. We'll discuss an example of that in just a bit. But before that, let's look at the architecture of Link. Now we all know that we can develop a .NET application in any .NET supported programming language like C Sharp, VB or J Sharp. Similarly, a link query can also be written using any of this um, .NET supported programming language. Now between the actual link query and the actual underlying data source, there is another component called link provider and it is the responsibility of the link provider to convert that link query into a format that the underlying data source can understand. Now, let's say the application is trying to fetch data from SQL Server database. If that's the case, this link query will be fed into a link provider called link to sql which is going to convert that link query into transact sql that the underlying sql server database can understand similarly if the link query has to fetch data from an xml document you know the same link query is going to be now fed into this link to XML provider which is going to convert that link query into XPath which the underlying XML document can understand. Similarly, we have different link providers like link to objects, link to entities, link to data set. We even have third party link providers like for example link to Twitter. So if we want to query Twitter, we can use link to Twitter. Similarly, we have link to Amazon, link to Google, etc. Now, let's look at an example of using link, but before that, let's actually write some ADO.NET code and you know, see what are the problems with that and then we'll try and rewrite the same example using link. So let's flip to SQL Server Management Studio. So this is the table that we'll be using for the demo. So here we have both male and female students. All we want to do is write ADO.NET code to retrieve only male students and then display them within the grid view control. And to achieve that, I have already created an empty ASP.NET web application project here. And all I have done so far is within the web.config file, I have a connection string here, which points to this sample database. And I also have a web form one here where I have dragged and dropped a grid view control and within the code behind file I have brought in the required ADO.NET namespaces and here you see the regular ADO.NET code. Now I'm not going to discuss you know the, the specific details of ADO.NET here because we have already discussed that in ADO.NET video series. So if you're new to ADO.NET, please watch videos from ADO.NET video tutorial. So what are we doing here? We are reading the connection string from web.config file and using that connection string, we are building the SQL connection object. And then here we have the actual SQL command that we want to be executed against SQL Server. So ADO.NET 
and this is the transact SQL that is specific to SQL Server database. Uh, look at the query itself. The query is straightforward. We are saying select all these columns from students table where gender equals male. Now this query is buried inside this opaque string which means here notice that we don't have any form of intelligence and since we don't have IntelliSense here, you know, this query is error prone, meaning we can make some spelling mistakes. For example, you know, instead of first name, we could very easily misspell it as a first name one. And, you know, that's the SQL query, right? And then here we're constructing list of students, uh, you know, and here we have the actual student class. So this student class is straightforward with ID, first name, last name, and gender properties. Okay, now so we are constructing list of students here, opening the connection, executing the command, and then we are looping through the reader object. And while we are looping through, we are creating an instance of student, and then we are retrieving data from the reader and populating the respective properties of the student object, adding the student object to the list, closing the connection, and then we are setting that list of students as the data source for the grid view control and invoking data bind. So let's quickly run this and see if it works. So it should be able to fetch only the male students and that's what we see here. Now, since we don't have IntelliSense inside this opaque string, you know, it's very easy to make a spelling mistake like that. And if we do that and look at this, when we build a solution, we Notice the status bar here. We don't have any compilation error. Okay, it says build succeeded. But when we actually run this at runtime, <clears throat> notice that we are going to have that error. So, you know, regular ADO.NET, since the queries are buried inside opaque strings, we don't have IntelliSense or we don't have compile time error checking. With link, we get that as well. Now, let's see how to rewrite uh, the same example using link. Okay, for that, let's actually delete this um, webform1.aspx and let's add, you know, webform1 again. And let's set font family here to Arial. And let's drag and drop a grid view control. Okay, now let's get to the code behind file. Now we need to add another. Uh, component here that's called link to SQL classes. We'll discuss link to SQL uh, in detail in a later video session, but for now let's go ahead and add a new item and click on the data tab under install the template, select link to SQL classes, and let's call this sample.dbml and click add. Okay, so now let's open the server explorer. So using this, we are going to connect to actual uh, SQL Server database from Visual Studio. And right click on Data Connections and select this option, Add Connection. So here, specify your server name. I'm working with, uh, you know, local installation of SQL Server here. So I can specify dot and then here we should be able to see the list of databases that are available or you can also give uh, the name of the server here the name of SQL server on my machine it is venkat-pc and I'm going to use Windows authentication to connect to that SQL uh, server and we want to work with sample database okay so that should add a connection to SQL Server from Visual Studio. And then once we expand tables, we should be able to see the students table. So now we're going to drag and drop the student table onto this designer surface, which is going to generate, uh, you know, student class for us. Okay, so within the sample.designer.cs file, we should see a class for student. Now, we are not going to get into the specifics of link to SQL here. We'll discuss that in detail in a later video session. So all we have done so far is generated a class for student table. Okay, and then within our code behind file, we are going to write a link query. Now, another thing that we need to 
understand here is in addition to the actual student class we also have something called sample data context here so this is the gateway into the database so we have to create an instance of the sample data context class in order uh, to be able to retrieve data from the sample database okay so the first thing that we need to do within the code behind file is to create an instance of that class sample data context let's call this data context equals new sample data context now what we want to do is retrieve data from SQL Server database using a link query okay so and whatever that link query is going to return we are going to set that as the data source for the grid view control okay so with the link query we first write the from keyword so from okay and then we specify name of a variable here let's call it student okay n now we specify our actual source where are the students present now students are present in this data context so data context dot students okay and now we don't want all the students if we want all the students we can simply say select student okay and then when we say grid view one dot data bind so when we run this we, we should get all the students because we are not filtering them so we have all uh, the male and female students okay now if we want to filter them we use a where keyword so where student dot gender equals we only want male employees okay so this query this link query right here should return male employees that are present in students table so let's quickly run this and see if that's what is the output that we get so notice that we only get male students and again notice that here we have IntelliSense as well the moment I say um, student dot it shows all the properties of the student object okay now if I misspell for example gender to gender one and then if I try to build the solution notice that we'll get to know about that at the compile time itself so we have you know IntelliSense and compile time error checking okay but with ADO.NET we don't have that because the queries are buried inside that opaque strings where we don't have IntelliSense and as a result of that we don't have compile time error checking as well all right and another thing to notice is so this is a link query now we want this query to be able to retrieve data from uh, underlying SQL Server database but can SQL Server understand this link query no SQL Server can only understand transact SQL so there has to be someone in between who is going to convert this link query into transact SQL that the underlying database can understand and who is that going to be that is what is the link providers job so link to SQL is going to take that link query convert that into transact SQL and send it to SQL server database and to prove that we can actually fire up SQL profiler and then run the application and see the corresponding transact SQL query that is generated so let's run a trace and then let's go ahead and run this So now when we go to SQL Profiler, stop the trace, notice that this is what is the transact SQL that is generated. So here we have some dynamic SQL that is generated by link to SQL provider. So when we execute this query, we should only get male employees. Right. So we have looked at the same example. Okay. Uh, now you know we have seen how to write a link query to work with uh, you know databases now let's say for example you know I want to work with in-memory objects like an array for example let's say I have an integer array here so integer array let's call it numbers equal let's say 1 to 10 numbers and to just speed things up I have already typed those numbers so let's copy and paste it right there so we have numbers from 1 to 10 now out of these numbers I want to retrieve even numbers and then display them within the grid view control 
okay again to achieve that we can use link query okay so let's comment this so this one right here is link to SQL because this is going to work with link to SQL provider and then convert that into a transact SQL now let's see how to work with objects in memory using link query so the same idea grid view one dot data source is going to be so we first write the from keyword and let's give this an alias from number in so what is the data source here numbers you know the array that is an in memory object now what we want we want only you know uh, even numbers so I'm going to say where number mod 2 equals 0 so if we divide a number by 2 and if the reminder is 0 then we know for sure it's an even number so that's what is the condition that we are specifying next to the where operator and then what we want to do if that is true then we want to select such kind of a number and this is you know this logic is going to be applied on every number within this object numbers which is an array of numbers okay and then simply invoke data bind so now when we run this we should actually say only the even numbers within the grid we control 2 4 6 8 10 now look at this within the example that we have looked at so far we worked with different data sources one data source here is transact um, SQL server database and the other data source is in memory objects but the link query is pretty much similar okay depending on the data source it's not going to change that much it is the actual SQL provider that is going to convert that link query into a syntax that is specific to the underlying data source that's it for today thank you for listening have a great day